Drama is being able to act and express yourself. Instead of going, oh dear, you go, oh dear, and jump. Magical, it is magical. Quickly turn to the person next to you and tell each other what you think the green children might be about. Who are the green children? What's going to happen to them? I think it's going to be scary. At Gordon Junior School in Kent, Louise Blakemore and her Year 6 class are reading The Green Children by Kevin Crossley Holland. In this story, the green brother and sister are lost and find themselves in a new country where people look different. Louise is using drama techniques to help her class to engage more fully with the text and to develop insight into the characters. Um, drama is a statutory requirement um, of our national curriculum, so everyone is entitled to it, every pupil is entitled to experience it. It's, it's what children have said, they can, they can feel the experience, so when it comes to writing they can write with more energy, they can use words that we've heard, they've heard in the drama. Obviously the more ideas you get, the better your writing becomes, the more energised it becomes. It helps me because I can take the um, character's point of view and turn it into my work to make it more descriptive and better. One of the important elements of drama, of course, is the way it in invites children in. I mean, learning happens when children are emotionally engaged. For many of our youngsters, the way in to the insights about the text, to the insights about other people and other people's perspectives, are through that personal uh, engagement with the feelings. Louise feels that drama can be used to improve children's reading and writing. The techniques we'll see her use in her literacy hour include freeze frame, roll on the wall, teacher enroll, improvisation, writing enroll, and decision alley. I use the freeze frame at first because it's a simple technique that allows the children to um, develop an awareness of the text. They don't have to have a deep understanding of character in order to do it, but it, it's just a gradual technique which allows them to, to become more involved. One of our lambs skipped into a dark cave and we ran in to rescue it. Come out into the bright light and, and when they've opened their eyes, they've got these children peering down on them. Okay, we're going to try and create that scene in a freeze frame. I would like you to work in groups of four or five small groups. What do you want your face to say? What is your body trying to say? Okay, you're frozen in time. What do you want your body language to express? What, what are you trying to convey with your, the face that you're pulling? We're scared of them because we've never seen them before. Okay. Susan um, was curled up at the beginning in her freeze frames and her expression on her face told us how the character was feeling. She didn't need words to do that. And she inferred through her actions um, how the character was feeling. Uh, it's a big thing for, for children to do, to put themselves in another character's shoes and in National Curriculum Key Stage 2 SAT, reading more than the words say is a huge part of it. 70 to 80 percent of the Key Stage 2 SATs is not about the words themselves, but what the words mean, what the layers of meaning that are hidden beneath those words. Here, this is where we lay down, here in this brightness. When you want them to think about a character, you get the children to line a large piece of paper, draw around them, um, and the, the physical drawing around of a, of a person really focuses on, them, on a character, they're thinking about a character. I'm going to talk about what's happened so far in the story, but I also want you to focus in on how the characters are feeling at this particular time. But then they would be really annoyed because they won't be able to get home and they just have to live with what they have. Their emotions sort of like worried, wish they never done that. I want to go home, I can't find the cave, looking for it. And you're going to record the feelings that either the boy or the girl have at this part in the story. And you're going to do that inside the shape that you make when you draw around the person. Roll on the Wall is an opportunity to capture on paper a character's thoughts and feelings. It's not handwriting, it's get, getting as many of their ideas 
onto the paper as they can about how that character's feeling and what they're going through. It's a record of their ideas and you can go around and then take their ideas further. But if you're drawing around a friend and you're beginning symbolically to see this piece of large white paper on the floor represent somebody, they represent somebody who's real to us in the context of this text, then children have the opportunity with big fat felts or with pencils or whatever to, to represent in different ways their uh, sense of that character's feelings. And you can challenge them, challenge the more able and the less able to come up with a higher vocabulary that will extend them and then extend their writing when they go on to write later on. He means sad, he's really upset because um, he just wants to get home and he wants to be able to get back to his world and see all his friends and his family again. You're going to become the crowd people. Our Elise, you're not 6B anymore, you are the market people. So get yourselves in, think about what you're going to say. I'm going to come and join you uh, in role as the crowd people. Hi, I say we get this lot out of here. What do you say? You're with me, guys. Concern for some teachers would be that to use drama and literacy, they need to be an actor and to have access to the school hall. Louise believes you just need confidence with your class and your own classroom. You don't have to be a good actor at all. You have to feel confident with what you're doing and you have to feel secure with your class, um, but definitely not a good actor. She's got green hair and green skin. Oh, look, she's got green toes. Um, you have to know your techniques and know how to plan them into a lesson. Go back to your you're just doing what the ch you're expecting the children to do, and that's not performance arts, that's not on stage dramatics. Uh, it's just um, getting in touch with the character, feeling the character, and expressing yourself just as you're asking your children to do. Many teachers worry about acting in drama, but they don't need to worry about it. The children are pleased their teacher is being different, being somebody else. And it's not about being big, it's about thinking and imagining. You can have quite a small space to think and imagine in. Louise works with her class to explore their reactions to the death of the green boy in the story. What does it mean that the song went out of him? Michael? Up it went while he was lying down and the song was singing, he was dying. OK, so you think when the song left him, he... he was dying. He, he yeah. was dying. Is that what you were going to say, Reese? Like a spirit coming out of him. Oh, that's lovely. Like his spirit yeah. leaving his body. Like coming out of his mouth or something. That's really nice. I like that. Good. Well, um, he could he could be dying, but his spirit could be going back to his family. Once Louise is sure that her class are empathising with both the green girl and the villagers, she leads them into an improvisation set at the village fair where the green girl is taunted. There, they're all busy doing their, their jobs, busy selling their goods, OK? And then all of a sudden, a guy walks through the market with this green child and the market people turn and they stare and they stare in astonishment. One, two, three, turn at the green child they see before them. Freak! Absolute freak! They shouted. One of the issues about running a successful whole class improvisation is being conscious of the security that the children need to feel a safe, secure environment. They not only need to feel safe to be allowed to voice their view, uh, to begin to explore either through the drama or through discussions in the weeks to come some of the consequences of the, the views that they voiced, the um, actions that they took. I want you to really think of things that you would say particularly to the green children. So you, were, you might shout nerd, but she's not a nerd, she's just different. Just okay? This goes on in our society all of the time, we see different. Um, for example, if we're right. looking at a, a drama on bullying, we don't want to encourage bullying in the classroom, but we do want to encourage uh, understanding of the plight of both the bullied and the bully. Green child, go! Green child, go! go. Green child, go! Green child, go! As I stared out, the crowd that had encircled me, I felt. I felt alone. I felt like I was in danger, like with all the people touching me. I felt that they were going to harm me. I felt angry, like people kept pushing me, like that they're going to hit me. I felt helpless because there was no one there to help me, and I felt like they were going to like hurt me. OK, 
Okay, the rules and conventions of drama are important to set up with your class before you attempt any. You need to go through the techniques with the children, but if you build it up slowly so they know the techniques, they know what's expected of them, then it becomes easier for them when you're in a whole drama situation. Um, as for rules, I mean, really, it's about respecting. You need the children need to understand that they'll be respected in what they say and no one's going to laugh at them. First time I'd done drama, we... I was pretty scared if I was going to be on my own as well. And it's 30 people is a lot of people and it gives you nervous. We're going to write that quick note, that scribbled note that the girl would leave behind her. You can sit anywhere for this. Lean on the tables, lean on the floor. In writing and role, they change the tenor of their text according to the person they're writing to. And that's very powerful and very important. And even though the, the audience is imagined, it feels real. And the drama is prompting the meaning making, both in the head, but also at the end of a pencil. Dear Mum, I am leaving because I feel not wanted. You are the only person who loves me, at least likes me. And there's, there's lots of research evidence that suggests boys in particular find writing in role and drama easier than lots of other kinds of writing. And I've already voiced it, they've perhaps rehearsed it in the role play. And so they come to the page, it's not blank, it's not empty. There's, they've got already a mind full of ideas and they're simply committing that to paper. Um, I had to do it because I couldn't live in this village because lots of people kept calling my names and I couldn't just handle it. I couldn't just, I just had to leave. She felt like crying. I love you, bye. I have had a nice time here. From Green Girl, P.S. Please do not come and look for me. Thank you. In any story where there is a choice to be made, a decision alley is a useful device. In this decision alley, the children are encouraged to use persuasive language to convince the green girl whether she should stay or go. And the green child, the green girl, is going to wander through the trees and as she wanders through the trees, it's like her inner conscience, her inner self, speaking out the reasons to go and the reasons to stay. But we're going to whisper those for her. So we're going to be the trees in the wood and we're going to whisper what she should do. As she walked through the trees, they spoke out to her, giving her reasons to stay or reason is to go. Because Kai you should stay because Kai loves you. Take so home with you and be a family. Because Kai loves you. Some people were saying stay with Guy, he loves you. Um, go back to your family, they're more important, they miss you. Go, your family friends will be worried. When you get to the end of Decision Alley, um, the idea is that the, the child that's moved down there can then make the decision using all of your shared ideas. What do you think um, the green child would do? She didn't really plan to leave her family and so she didn't really get to say goodbye to them very well. So I'd go back and maybe say goodbye and then maybe try and find it again. But the important thing about Decision Alley is that we can honour the children's decision at the end of it. You've written the ending of this story through your decisions, through your participation in these drama techniques, and you've done it brilliantly. Thank you very much. Well done. When children speak um, uh, or participate in drama, they are rehearsing exactly what they need to write. And children are always saying, it gives me something to write, it gives me a purpose to write but it also gives me words and ideas and a feeling about what to write. So, um, you know, we can cover all of our writing objectives that are in our national curriculum through drama. Mm -hmm.